James Gill, Connecticut's chief medical examiner, just recently discussed the future of forensic pathology and primarily the need for more bodies, live ones. He is stopping by the studio this morning to explain. Thanks for your time today. Thank you for having me. Let's talk a little bit about the current state of affairs. You recently gave an interview about the current state of medical examiners and coroner's offices all across the country and the need for more bodies. Like I said, is this a lack of funding issue coupled with the shortage of forensic pathologists? It is a combination. Uh, I think the main problem is a shortage in the workforce. Uh, there are just that, not that many forensic pathologists out there. Uh, there are few, about 500 or 600 board certified uh, practicing forensic pathologists that are working. And if all the jurisdictions in the country were covered by a forensic pathologist, we would need 12 to 1,500. Oh, wow. So there's a big shortage, and that's going to then affect problems with uh, doing autopsies and uh, issuing reports and death certificates. That was going to be my next question. So this is now creating a backlog in those autopsies, the final reports. Typically, what is the timeline for getting those things completed? Kind of the professional guidelines are having your reports, 90% uh, of your reports done within 60 days. Now, the reason is, one is for families, right? Families are waiting for uh, death certificates so they can get uh, life insurance benefits, uh, and they're waiting for the remains so they can have their funerals. So there's a delay in some offices with performing autopsies. Uh, we saw a problem in one state where there were over 200 bodies waiting for autopsies wow. to be done. So you can imagine the anguish that causes the families. Right. Plus law enforcement, uh, they're investigating cases and so forth, and so that's gonna interfere with, with their work. So what do we do? How do we, how do we fix this? Uh, you know, funding is an issue. We're trying to encourage more people to go into forensic pathology. Uh, salaries are actually increasing because of the shortage, uh, and we're working on some things like loan forgiveness, student loan forgiveness, oh, okay. uh, to encourage uh, those residents in pathology to come into forensic pathology because it's a it's a really exciting uh, field. It's something different every day. You never know what you're going to see. So hopefully, uh, you know, uh, they'll get the message. You know, you would think that shows like CSI would be doing a little bit more to pique the interest of this next generation and get them involved in forensic science. I think it has actually helped. Uh, okay. So people know what we do. It's not quite exactly what we do, <laughs> but at least gets their foot in the door, right? right? So then uh, they can come and we say, come and spend a day with us and, and really see what it's like. Uh, and some people say, that's not for me. Other people say, I love this. Sign me up. Yeah. So what do you see as the future of medical legal death investigations if the current situation holds? Well, the problem is quality of our, our data, right? Uh, so a lot of our uh, information goes to the public health. Um, you know, if you want to improve the health of people, you want to know why they're dying. Uh, and death certificates actually save lives. Uh, and so uh, without that workforce, uh, autopsies aren't going to be done or quality autopsies aren't going to be done. Uh, turnaround times are going to be delayed. Families are going to be waiting. Police are going to be waiting. The public health data is going to not be as good quality. Uh, so th those are some of the, the big ones. You know, you mentioned it's a, an industry that's already strained. You're already cash strapped and you, there's a shortage of people. I would imagine that the COVID-19 pandemic only made matters worse. Yeah, we we're kind of one areas, um, one of the areas in medicine that, that still had to work, right? I, right. I mean, obstetricians and people working in the ICU uh, all had to work. So did medical examiners and coroners yeah. because our, our job doesn't stop. Unbelievable. All right, let's talk about some of the advancements that you've seen during your years um, in pathology. Um, are you able to examine or autopsy in a way now that you never dreamt of? Yeah, I think there are two great advances that we've seen in the last couple uh, you know, decades. One is in imaging. So more and more offices are using CAT scanners, uh, which uh, can improve efficiency, maybe even uh, help with our autopsy issues. Uh, the other thing it does is it's, it's great documentation. And part of our work, we really want to make sure that we document all the injuries and so someone else can look at them and see what we saw. The other area is with uh, DNA and molecular testing. And I'm not talking about just for identification, but actually for disease. So now we can start looking uh, in our decedents uh, to see if they have a, um, uh, a hereditary disease, maybe a heart condition that caused their death that we weren't able to diagnose 20 years ago. Fascinating. Interesting. All right, last question for you here. Finish this sentence. The future of forensic pathology is? Bright. Uh, I, I think that we are getting more people interested in the field. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful field. Uh, you, 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 you see something, again, different every day. You're dealing with families, police, law enforcement, you're teaching. 
Uh, and so I, I'm very, uh, my outlook is very positive about forensic pathology. It's just going to take a little time to well, get Well, you're a great ambassador for it. So thank you very much for all your work. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.